Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Would you like even more content? Here's my Patreon. Now onto the stories. Case file number 1164, written by Suffering is optional. The entire road just vanished. My brother and I were driving through a residential back street, trying to avoid the main road. This was before GPS was common, so we were using our sense of direction, and we ended up running parallel to the main road. I was the passenger. It was a bright sunny day around midday. As soon as we had turned onto this parallel road, we had noticed it was a long straight road, and we had a good few kilometers in front of us before it ended. So we relaxed now as we had a new path home. He looked to his right. Australia driving is on the right hand side, and I to my left. This couldn't have been more than a few seconds because when he slammed his brakes, and I looked forward to why he was braking, it was because a goddamn street ended and we nearly mounted the curb into the house. And no, he didn't swerve, we were suddenly at a T intersection, and a few seconds before that, we had as far as the eyes could see of road ahead. We booted the hell out of there. Case notes for file 1164. An entire road just vanished. The only thing I can think to explain this is dual quantum immortality all the way to a new universe that doesn't have a continuous path through that residential neighborhood. But that's a massive divergence from the original universe. It might not be that, and if not, I don't know. It can't be a space-time anomaly because you don't mention being in a different area. You still turned and you were in the area you're supposed to be to go home. So it wasn't just a different road. What else could it be? Maybe a perception glitch of some kind? But what could or would want to cause you some illusion of a road that continues straight forward? It's not like it was trying to kill you and the road forward was like a pit of lava or something. So I don't know what the motive would be for doing that. I know I'd have gone totally mad seeing an entire road just vanish. That would be freaky. At least you had a witness. That always helps. Case file number 1165, written by Chaos Chronicle, the boy who conquered physics. So, I work at a sandwich shop. Anyway, I was getting ready to close at 10 p.m., and I'm pretty meticulous about closing on time because I'm usually ready to go home by then. It's 9.55 p.m., and the bell rings, letting me know someone came in. I grumble a little bit because I'm tired and head to the front. This little boy, probably seven or eight, is standing in the front of the counter. He's wearing this old-fashioned tweed, jacket, and a red baseball cap. I say, hello, what can I do for you tonight? Like I usually do. He just stares at me like I grew a second head. I stare back, confused. I have to use the restroom, he says and runs back to where the restrooms are. I hear the door squeal open and slam shut. At this point, I'm a little aggravated because I'm getting ready to close and I don't want to have to wait on this little dude whose parents couldn't even be bothered to come in with him. So I start to close. I turn off the open sign and head to the back to do some quick dishes thinking I'll just lock the door behind the little boy when he leaves. I finish the dishes and start to put the food in the refrigerator. I'm starting to get pissed. All I have to do is put the food away, count the bread, and count the drawer. I finished all of this and still no little boy. I put on my coat and get ready to leave, gathering receipts and such. I go to knock on the door of the boy's restroom. Hey, I'm closing now, you need to leave. Nothing. Hey, kid, come on. Still nothing. If you don't at least answer me, I'm going to open the door. The lock was broken, so I knew I would be able to open it. I stood there, worrying that maybe something happened to him. Kid? I jiggle the handle open. I kind of covered my eyes because I didn't really want to see a little boy on the toilet. I expected him to scream or at the very least say something. When all there was was silence, I looked into the restroom the size of a small closet. There was no one. No sign of anything. The lid was still lifted from when I had cleaned it earlier. No trash in the bin. What? I checked the girls' restroom and the entire lobby. Nothing. Nowhere in that entire shop and there is absolutely no way that he left. It's impossible that he left because I've worked there long enough that the doorbell is a Pavlovian response, and you can hear it clearly everywhere in the store. I went into work a little early the next morning and got my check. 
My close friend was there and she and I talked for a little bit about her boyfriend and gossip that she had and whatever. Then she says, Dude, there was the creepiest little kid standing outside the front door when I came in this morning. We come in and leave from the back door. Really? Yeah, he was just standing there, staring out the window. But when I went to open the door, he ran off. What did he look like? I ask, trying to keep from freaking out. Boy, gray coat, red hat. Neither I or anyone else has seen or heard about him since. What the hell? Case notes are file 1165. The boy who conquered physics. So I fully understand what you mean by a Pavlovian response to the sound of a door alert. I had one similar when I was working downtown as a front desk manager for an apartment building in downtown Montreal. When someone comes in, you sit up straight, you perk up, and you put your friendly face on. <laughs> it's automatic. So I believe you. No way the kid left unless he left through the back door, but I'm guessing it's locked from the inside, or there would be some alert if he did. A fire escape that's broken? Only thing I can think of. I know you, uh, the employees go in and out of there, but it seems like it wouldn't be possible for the kid to do that. And why would he? Why not just go out the front door? Why did he come back, though, alone with no parents in the morning? That's very weird. Doesn't seem like a ghost, though, interacting too easily with the material world. No EM interference, causing lights to flicker, etc. Altogether, I don't know. But there are a lot of stories of very materialized um, kids that appear, well, entities that appear as kids. The kids with the black eyes, there were a few stories of kids just standing in the road and then not being there when the person went back to check. There's something going on with kids, maybe not kids, but entities posing as kids for some reason. Is it nefarious? Well, I don't know if it's nefarious, if there's malice intended, but it's very creepy. <laughs> so whoever is doing it, stop. Creepy file number 95, written by I've Seen Bigfoot. We found Bigfoot in Alaska. I was 13, camping with my family on the border of Alaska and Canada. I think it was June, just about dusk, and if you know anything about Alaska, you'll know that it was quite late. We'd been listening to what sounded like bear noises, moans, grunts, and caterwauls like you'd hear from baby bears, coming from the woods all evening. This isn't a terribly abnormal thing in Alaska, but still sends a shiver down our backs. My younger sisters and my mother and I were setting up the tent, and all of a sudden a bunch of birds freak out and fly out of the forest about 150 yards away. We all turn that way to look at the sound, and just as we do, something crosses a clearing from where the birds flew. In the clearing, there stood one tree with branches starting higher up, and as a thing, we thought it was a human, walked upright on two legs, arms swinging, etc., crossed. Its head just came up to the lowest branch. We automatically assumed it was my six foot two brother going into the woods to pee. It was one of those moments you see in a movie. I said, that must be Blake. And not two seconds later, our brother shows up behind us, asking why we look so startled. So then we rationalize it by saying it must have been someone else going into the woods? My brother went over to the clearing to check it out, and as we stood and watched, we realized how huge the thing was. Blake was about half its bulk, and came about two feet short of the lowest branch that the thing's head brushed. He came back shaky and clearly startled. My brother the skeptic said he heard something very heavy running very fast through the woods. Case notes of the creepy file number 95. We found Bigfoot in Alaska. You know, stories about Bigfoot don't surprise me at all. I think people have a misconception that the entire world is fully explored and we've cataloged all species of animals and creatures out there. Not even close. The world is just too massive. There's unexplored regions abound, not to mention the cave systems. If a low population of bipedal species was out there, who's to say they couldn't be living mostly in caves like we used to hundreds of thousands of years ago, hunting and foraging the nearby forests and getting water from streams? Nothing at all that crazy, not even close. Especially not relative to the content I usually cover on this channel. Pretty mainstream almost. <laughs> Funny how Bigfoot by comparison almost feels too normal. You know, this could even help to explain the missing 411 cases. They overlap so much with national forests and cave networks, it's not just hobbyist spelunkers going missing. So be careful out there, folks. Who knows what's there? And now time for the movie of the day, Shutter Island. So Shutter Island is a 2010 movie, described as an American neo-noir psychological thriller. 
It's directed by Martin Scorsese. Not exactly an underrated director, is he? And it's based on a novel, so you know the storyline is going to be refined and detailed, and it is. It's one of Leonardo DiCaprio's best roles, in my opinion. And what I love about this movie more than anything else is the tone it's able to set. It's an ongoing mystery, starting off as a whodunit, but progressing into a multi-layered question about reality and sanity. On a second watch, I noticed all of the hints. All I can say is, if you like thrillers, watch this and pay attention. You absolutely can figure out the ending before you get there. Maybe even from the first 10 minutes, yeah. The movie respects your intelligence, so keep that in mind. But definitely watch it. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony signing off.